so good morning students this is professor abdul mateen today we'll be discussing about the process and stages of the system design once the analysis is completed the user requirements have been identified the various requirements stated by the user have been converted into the logical design by using the data flow diagrams then the next phase in system development life cycle is the system design here we focus on the various aspects of the system design so first we need to understand what is design the most creative and challenging phase of the system development life cycle is the system design the term design describes a final system and the process by which it is developed it refers to the technical specification that will be applied in implementing the candidate system it also includes the construction of programs and also focuses on the program testing the key question here is how should the problem be solved so once the system design focuses on how the problem should be solved that is transforming system requirements into operationalizing them so once the physical the user requirements have been specified by the user how we convert them into the operational requirements or how we operationalize the thing from user requirements to how we produce a system and give it to the user how we operationalize how you functionalize the system that we do it in the system design process so system design can be categorized into the two major parts or two major phases one is called as the logical design and another one is called as the physical design in logical design we focuses on, we focus on the user needs whether the user needs are met or not and that is how the input should be processed and converted into outputs and also it focuses on the various aspects so here are the different steps we 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 focus on the following things in logical design the first one is we review the current physical system that is how the data flows into the system what are the file contents and what volumes of files are used what volumes of data is used and how frequently the data is used that we focus here in the logical design this is the first step then the second step is prepare output specification that is determines the format content and frequency of reports that is once the input is designed what type of output to be generated by the system and how the output should be specified that is whether the reports generated they are required daily or in the form of weekly or in the form of monthly or yearly reports that have been specified in output specification then the input we next the next step is preparing input specification that is input specification in the sense what is the format of the input what content it should have and the most common functions of the input that will be identified in the input specification this also includes determining the flow of document from the input data source to the actual input location that is how the data flows from the input device or the input screen as we can say user interface from user interface how the data goes through to the database how it is sorted that we focus here that is input specification now uh, the fourth step is preparing the security and control specification now who will be controlling the database who will be allowing uh, who secures the data how the data should be secured and who is allowed to edit the data that we specify here in the fourth step and the fifth step is specifies the implementation plan what is implementation plan in the sense how we should go about implementing our system once we have designed input once we have designed output once we have prepared the security and control specification we focus on how the implementation should be done what user are required and how to train the user to use the system that we focus in the implementation plan so once we do this then prepare a logical design so finally once the system specifications are done we pr it, pr it also prepares the logical design that is a structured walk through of information flow output input control and implementation plan so once we do this we start reviewing 
the cost and the benefits and the target dates and the system constraints. So as we see here, the seven phase, seven steps in logical design is review the current physical system, then prepare output specification, then prepare input specification, then prepare edit security and control specification, then specify the implementation plan, prepare a logical design and finally review benefit of cost and target dates and system constraints. So once we do this, so what do you mean by constraints? Constraints means the problems or the barriers for implementing the system. There may be some user requirements or some constraints specified by the user that we need to consider while designing or while implementing the system. So once we do this, the next phase, the second part of system design is the physical system design. So physical system design focuses on the design specification in the sense what input and output devices are to be used, where to store the data and what is our backup policy. So here in the physical design, it produces the working system by defining the design specification. That is in turn programmers write necessary programs that modifies the software package and accepts input from the user. It performs the necessary calculation. So all the programming is done here which converts the input specifications into the output specification and also how the existing database and files are used and how the outputs are produced whether in the hard copy form or it should be displayed on the screen. So all these things will do it in the physical design. So physical design also goes through the four phases. The first one is designing the physical system. So while designing the physical system, we will consider what are the input output medias to be used. Input output medias means whether we are using a normal keyboard mouse for input or else we will be using any other devices which provides input. So we will specify that. And the same way output specification, whether the output is to be generated on the monitor or the output should be generated on the any of the printing devices that is identified in the first step. Then the second step is designing the database and specify backup procedure. Now database means how the database should be designed, what are the tables, or how the data is stored in the tables, what are the fields, right? what are the constraints there what will be the primary key, all those things we will specify and also we will prepare a backup procedure. So backup procedure in the sense, the system should be always running, that is maybe sometimes in a very technical uh, specification, the system will be running 24 bar 7. In that case, any problem occurs to the original database, there should be some backup plan or backup procedure which will be running in the background. That backup should take care of if any emergencies happen. Then the third thing here is design physical information flow through the system and physical design walkthrough. That is how the information flows from the phys system in the physical form. That is who takes the information, who accepts the input, who produces the output, right? All those things will design in the first phase of physical system design. Then in the second step or the second phase, we'll plan system implementation. So what is system implementation? prepare conversion and schedule dates. Now how to implement the system, at what time the system should be delivered, right? how to meet the schedules of the users, right? Or user training right? and then the target dates, what is to be given to the system that will be identified here. Then finally we will determine training procedures, courses and timetable. So user should be trained on how to use the system. So before directly going to the implementation, user training happens in the implementation, but before that we need to prepare or determine a proper plan or a schedule, a timetable, so that the user training should happen in a proper schedule and time. So we follow the time and what is to be trained and who should be trained on what basis that courses we have to design and finally we have to design the timetable. So once we design the physical system and plan system implementation, then we go for device a test and implementation plan. So before going to giving uh, implementing the system, we need to test the system which is being currently produced. 
So, test in the sense was providing various input and output right and seeing how the inputs and outputs whether the system is behaving correctly for different types of inputs and which is generating the proper output or not that is what is testing and then implementation plan means we will be preparing proper implementation plan with training procedures courses and the timetable and specify any other hardware and software requirements. So, if you want to purchase a new hardware or a software that we need to specify here. So, once we do this the final step in the physical system design is update benefits, cost, conversion dates and system constraints. So, once we are finished with the hardware and software new hardware and software specification we will again update our cost and benefits and also when the system will be delivered to the user and what are the system constraints, constraints that will be identified in the system design. So, in logical design we focused on how the user needs to be converted into the actual system design and in physical system design we have understood how the input specifi is specified, how the output is specified, right? how the database is designed, what is, what is our backup policy, then how the physical information flows right? and then what is the system implementation plan we have and whether we have to purchase new hardware and software and finally, we prepare a cost benefit analysis report. So, once we do this, the next step is what is the actual implementation of the system design. So, in the next class, today we will finish here only. In the next class, we will be focusing on how various design methodologies. So, here we will be seeing various design methodologies, how the system is designed, what approaches are used for designing the system. So, I hope you have understood this. So, if any doubts are there, you can ask.